Hello everyone. In this video, we will see about introduction to sensors and actuators in robotics. So first, any autonomous system has three fundamental aspects. That is sensing the environment using sensors, reasoning through a logic and information processing, and then interacting with the environment through actuators. Together, these are known as the uh, sensing logic actuation cycle as it is represented in the figure and next this is the typical robot system where through the sensors data are acquired and the execution of the program is done that is the task is given and this is given to the control and actions are, actions are performed using the actuators in the environment this has both a human interface And uh, this is the entire uh, robot system where it has the functional units of a robot. So it has fun mechanical units, sensor units, actuation units, supervision units. So first mechanical units are uh, robot arms. It is a rigid links connected through rotational or a prismatic joints. Each has one degree of freedom and mechanical subdivisions like uh, supporting structure for mobility, wrist for uh, dexterity, uh, dexterity and uh, end effector that is for task execution. That is example, it is manipulation. And uh, sensor units may be uh, proprioceptive and extraceptive. We will see in detail later. That is internal sensors and external sensors it has. And next is actuation units. So it is motors, electrical, hydraulic motor, or pneumatic motors, and motor, motor uh, control algorithms. And next is the supervision units. So this functional unit is for uh, task planning and control, and for artificial intelligence and uh, reasoning. So next, this is a video segment showing example of uh, pick and place operation. Pick and place robots utilize a variety of grippers to manipulate materials. Bag grippers. Bag grippers have adjustable fingers to move bags of any size. This gripper is best suited to work with soft parts and bags such as soil, sand, and absorbent material. Magnetic grippers. Magnetic grippers can handle steel products and heavier payloads. Suction grippers. Suction grippers use vacuums and cups to manipulate hard, flat products such as boxes and bricks. Finger grippers. Finger grippers pitch material between two or more plates to move it. These grippers are best utilized when moving empty boxes, packing materials, or handling similar products. Spider robots. Spider robots are another way manufacturers automate pick and place applications. So sensors and actuators allow robots to achieve uh, certain tasks. So sensors are devices which measure quantities which the robot can use to achieve given tasks. Examples of uh, what a robot may need to determine, which includes that how far away and where is an object uh, like another robot, a light or a wall is present, at what speed is the robot moving, if the robot is on a hill, at what angle it is? If the robot is rotating, by how how much has it rotated? Where is the robot? Or in what direction it is going? How far it has traveled? How much power it has consumed? What information is being communicated to the robot? The robot may require for this uh, internal and external sensors that's why it is classified as proprioceptive and extraceptive. Proprioceptive is um, internal sensors and extraceptive are external sensors. Um, external sensors which is used to measure other objects. For instance, how far away is an object or where is that object. Okay, So the classification are uh, motion, force, torque sensor, touch or tactile sensor and further classification as contact and non-contact sensors. So contact sensors are uh, pressure, force, slip, torque, surface finish sensors. Non-contact sensors are vision, optical, acoustic, infrared, 
proximity range temperature chemical sensors and coming to the internal sensors these are used to measure the robot itself for instance how fast it is going the angle of the robot or uh, where its uh, gripper is how much power it's consuming so these are uh, internal uh, sensors internal sensors are a potentiometer tachometer optical encoder micro switch so we will be seeing a one by one so first what is sound sensors sound sensors it is often in the form of uh, microphones these are like a robot's ears so they convert a sound into an electrical signal these sensors will help the robots listen and respond to the commands for instance a single clap might make the robot move right and two claps could make it turn left so the sound sensors are a bit uh, trickier than light sensors because they produce a small voltage which needs to be boosted for the robot to understand and additionally voice controlled um, robots can be handy when you need to train a robot while doing other tasks these are about sound sensors and next is uh, light sensor Light sensors detect the light and generate an electrical signal. Robots uh, primarily use two types that is photoresistors and photovoltaic cells. Photoresistors uh, change their resistance with varying light levels making them great for uh, light sensitive robots. Mm, photovoltaic cells stain, uh, which turns the sunlight into electricity which is handy for uh, solar powered robots. With some uh, clever circuitry, these cells can also function as a sensors. Other light sensors like uh, photo tubes and photo transistors are used uh, less often. And next, coming to the temperature sensors. This measures temperature changes by monitoring voltage uh, differences. Robots use these sensors to function in extreme conditions like icy glaciers or uh, scorching deserts. And these are uh, various temperature sensor types that is such as uh, LM34, TMP37 and LM35. They are employed for tasks like uh, gauging air and uh, surface temperatures. For example, a Mars rover relies on its temperature sensor to adapt to changing terrain. If it senses uh, temperature drop, it adjusts its wheel traction for icy surfaces. And in contrast, a firefighting robot can use a temperature sensor to find and head towards the hottest par parts of a uh, burning building where it can be most effective. Next is tactile sensors. Tactile sensor is like a robot sense of touch, allowing it to feel things it comes into contact with. There, there are two main types that is touch sensor and force sensor. So first you will see about touch sensor. These sensors detect when something touches or makes contact with them. They help robots detect changes in things like speed, position, force and more at their joints and end parts. When these sensors sense an obstacle, they send a signal to the robot which then responds by doing things like moving in reverse, turning or stopping. Common devices like uh, micro switches and limit switches are often used for this purpose, helping the robots uh, avoid obstacles. Next, uh, capacitive uh, sensors identify touches using conductivity, often uh, responding to human touch or any uh, conductive object. In contrast, resistive touch sensors recognize touch through pressure on the surface enabling the robots to sense their surroundings regardless of an uh, object's electrical conductivity. Next, the other type is force sensor. These are uh, crucial for robots to measure and understand forces involved in various uh, tasks like um, loading and unlo unloading materials or assembling parts. They help ensure the robot performs its functions effectively and can also be used for quality control during assembly. Next is uh, proximity sensor. This and the robot detects nearby objects and measures the distance without touching them. It works by sending out a signal and analyzing what comes back. 
this helps the robot avoid collisions and there are uh, uh, two main types in this infrared transceivers these use infrared light to detect objects when an obstacle is in the way the reflected light is captured by the sensor and next type is ultrasound sensor sorry there are three main types second one is ultrasound sensors they emit high frequency sound waves and detect objects by analyzing the echoes uh, these sensors can also measure uh, distances. And next one is the photoresistor. Although primarily a light sensor, a photoresistor can also sense proximity. When an object gets close, the amount of light changes which alters the photoresistor's resistance and the robot can detect this change. Next. Uh, how uh, suitable sensors are, uh, are to be selected. So for that uh, criteria, proximity sensor criteria is given based on the object requirements, based on the environment of sensing and sensing range or distance. What is a suitable sensor uh, to be used for the applications can be uh, some criteria is given. You can go through this. And next is the pressure sensor. These are handy because they can feel touch, pressure and force. They help design robot hands that can figure out how much pressure to apply when grabbing uh, something. And next is um, navigation uh, sensors. Hold on. This helps the robots know where they are. So common ones are GPS, localization and compass sensors. So here GPS is global positioning system. We know that robots use signals from orbiting satellites to figure out their approximate location and speed. Second is localization. This method involves a robot determining its location by recognizing things like uh, doors, windows or walls. It is less expensive than GPS. And third is a digital magnetic compass. This sensor uses the Earth's magnetic field to guide the robot. It is uh, cheaper than GPS and works well for both knowing the robot's position and guiding it to a destination. Next is the vision sensor. A robot's vision system uses a computer controlled camera to see and adjust its actions. So there are 2D and 3D cameras. 2D shows a flat image while 3D provides uh, depth information, helping robots handle objects with varying positions more effectively. Thermal and infrared cameras help robots work in uh, challenging lighting conditions like darkness or fog where regular cameras might struggle. And next is acceleration sensors and accelerometer it's a gadget that measures a robot acceleration and tilt. It senses both when the robot speeds up or slows down. So there are two types of forces it deals with. One is a static force and other one is a dynamic force. A static force helps a robot understand how it's tilted, which is handy for balancing or knowing if it is on flat ground or an incline. And dynamic force measures the force needed for the robot to move and can tell us how fast the robot is going. Next is a gyroscope sensor. It's like a compass for a robot, helping it understand and maintain its orientation using the principle of angular momentum. It measures how quickly the robot is spinning around different axes, like uh, turning left or right. This sensor is particularly useful when you want your robot to stay oriented without uh, relying on Earth's gravity. And next is IMU sensor. This combines different sensors like a gyro, accelerometer, magnetometer to figure out a robot's uh, speed, orientation and direction. The magnetometer which acts like a compass helping to correct the gyro's readings by sensing the Earth's magnetic field. 
the sensor is crucial for understanding how the robot is uh, moving and where it's headed and these are uh, the criteria for uh, selection of sensors but remember one thing there is always more than one way to sense the desired physical quantity by more than one type of sensor okay so we have to go for optimum next coming to the robotic actuators you know actuator is a device which causes something to happen that is this could be a robot movement which is often achieved using uh, motors so that is an actuator is needed to make the robot's wheels turn or the joints of a robot arm to rotate or for a robot gripper to open or close okay this is an actuator does or it could be to let the others know what the robot is doing like a light being turned on to indicate the robot is working sound is being emitted so the actuator is a loudspeaker and communication in some form so that a transmitter is needed an lcd a screen for uh, showing pictures and other data so these are uh, basic robotic actuator does and it has uh, several two classifications linear or rotary and you have uh, different types in this electrical actuator hydraulic actuator pneumatic actuator and the other types or uh, shape memory alloys thermal actuators okay and in basic electrical actuators are uh, dc motors ac motors vldc stepper motors servo motors all those things are electrical actuators hydraulic actuators are uh, which uses pressurized oil water pneumatic uses pressurized air we'll see one by one its advantages over other and these are some of the criteria for uh, selection of actuators depends on nature of the application speed torque weight material moment of actuation based on this actuators need to be selected for particular application so if we have seen uh, hydraulic actuators has uh, advantages as it is it gives accurate measurement and constant torque of force regardless of the speed changes and comparatively it is produces less noise but disadvantages is as it is hydraulic this has leakage and maintenance is difficult and it is costlier than electrical and safety concerns like fire pressure also pollution these are some of the disadvantages of using this hydraulic actuators next coming to pneumatic actuators this is less polluting inexpensive and safe and easy to operate it is clean compared to hydraulic and disadvantages as it is through air it is loud and noisy lack of precise control sensitive to vibrations and less operating pressure range next actuate electric actuators as we have seen different types are there that is dc motors stepper motors servo motors harmonic drives most probably harmonic drives are used in this uh, robotics okay this harmonic drive actuators are used in this uh, industrial robots we will see uh, in the next lecture about the working of this harmonic drives so advantages of this actuators are fast response it has good control high precision and maintenance is easy so disadvantages are fixed actuator parameters because um, uh, the, due to the power it is overheating and uh, high cost susceptible to environmental variations so these are about the uh, sensors and actuators in robotics thank you